It's time for another crowdfunding campaign filled to the brim with AI generated and stolen content. But unlike my other videos that tell the story of a Kickstarter, Indiegogo or GoFundMe scam after the campaign owner has managed to rip off hundreds and sometimes thousands of backers, this one is yet to happen. I get a lot of kick scammer suggestions coming on the emails on an almost daily basis, but I almost never get a message about a scam that is yet to happen. This is weeks away, possibly days away from scamming people. But once the evidence of this project was presented to me, I knew it was my duty to help spread the word. Mostly because the campaigns are based on classic LucasArts point and click adventure games with a history of Indiana Jones and Ghostbusters 2. Yeah, and something tells me that I've got a lot of subscribers that are fans of all these things. So before it's too late, after you hit the subscribe button and the like button of course, let's take a look back at this upcoming project by going back to the beginning. And here we are, back in November of 2023, where one Mr. Millennial Mapelli, an Italian point and click adventure game addict who is a big fan of, obviously, Ghostbusters, launched Ghostbusters The Adventure Game. Hi everyone, today we present to you an exciting Kickstarter project, Ghostbuster the Adventure Game. Ghostbuster the Adventure Game is a classical point and click adventure game that brings to life the iconic scenes from the beloved 1984 Ghostbuster movie. Now, of course, this game was hitting all the right beats. It's using a classic art style that's super nostalgic to the fan base, and well, of course, you got Ghostbusters in it too. What more could a group of hardcore nostalgic for the late 80s and early 90s man children want? And no, that's not a dig at point and click fans or even Ghostbuster fans because. I'm one of those people. And for all of you people out there wondering, it's a game that's being created using Adventure Game Studios, which is not genuinely a bad thing. Ask any avid adventure game fan and they'll tell you that this is actually quite common. Plenty of small indie games get released using this engine over on Steam. However, what they don't do is release games full of stolen assets, AI imagery, and a license that they definitely definitely do not have the rights to use. Don't believe me? Well, here is the only known footage that I can find on YouTube because I'm the unfortunate person that had to play this thing. Starting up, we've got what I assume is an AI ghost with a pixelated filter slapped on top and a pixelated Slimer floating about the screen, which is stolen from Justin Game Design over on DeviantArt. The iconic New York Public Library is shown next, which again, just more AI imagery with a pixelated filter applied. And then the game starts with its iconic characters reading out the movie script literally word for word in a typical point and click style. This is it. This is definitely it. See those UV lenses come in for the video camera and that blank tape. I need it, the one you erased yesterday. Oh, and uh, by the way, for all of you people out there that think to yourself, these characters look mighty familiar. Well, it's because they're taken from the Indiana Jones Fate of Atlantis DOS video game with an extra blue filter added to Dr. Venkman. And uh, the heads of the characters, they're stolen from a Ghostbusters Java game. <laughs> Heck, we can even work out where they got the sprites from, that being the website Spriter's Resource, as when Ray moves, a small line which has been badly cut can be seen under his head. Oh, and if you're wondering why old Jennifer here looks just so completely different from everyone else, it's because she's stolen from freepick.com. She's the uh, gym girl character model sheet with walk cycle animations, apparently. Anyway, more stolen AI-generated backgrounds continue that all cut out horrifically, I might add, which leads us to the New York Library, which is, of course, another stolen picture. Whoa, what's happened to Ray? And then very little else happens in this demo before it crashes, and that's the end of that. Now look, let me just say that on the surface, I've got absolutely no issue with a game being made like this. 
It reminds me of the Steamed Hams graphic adventure game that was also completely unofficial, and at the end of the day, if this Ghostbuster game is the creator's first ever attempt at making something like this, then fair play. We all gotta start somewhere, right? The difference is that the exceptional Simpsons Steamed Ham game was a free, fun little download, and the not-so-exceptional Ghostbusters game was a Kickstarter asking for 10,000 euros. Now, Mr. Mapelli tries to get around this very issue when replying to people on Facebook by saying that rewards should not be considered as a price for the purchase of a product, but the contribution given to the author for the creation of the product itself. In other words, you're not paying him for a product, you're paying him for nothing. And then when the product's finished, he'll give it to you for free. I don't think that's gonna fly, mate. <laughs> Either way, it doesn't matter, because even though the project did raise over $2,600 on its first day, it didn't earn much of anything else after that, and was an eventual failure, raising just 41% of its goal. So, that's the end of that, right? Obviously not. <laughs> By this point, we've all seen the kind of guy that Miss Emiliano Mapelli is, a bit of a naive opportunist using AI art. Well, would you believe, but the same thing happened again with his follow-up game, The Ocean's Claw, which was once again full of AI art, except of course this background, which is an Adobe asset, which you never know he may have paid for, and this map, which is the old sea map from Pokemon that Emerald needed to catch Mew, apparently. Here's wishing old knockoff Indiana Jones here the best of luck with doing that. But, in his defense, the difference between this Indiana Jones ripoff and the Ghostbusters ripoff is that he isn't going to Kickstarter for it. Well, not at this point in time, at least. He's funding the cost of his AI heavy point and click game himself. So, again, fair play, I suppose. Well, actually, no. Yes, this isn't going to Kickstarter, but what is going to Kickstarter is a book that he's working on that will then help fund the creation of his Ghostbusters ripoff and the Indiana Jones ripoff. Beyond the Click was originally going to be a book that once again featured Indiana Jones sprites on the front cover, before he eventually changed that to a typical AI image that mistakenly titled the book as Beyond the The Click. Eventually, the second the got removed, but the additional I did not. Anyway, that's where we are now, waiting for this Kickstarter to go live, and all we have to go on is this AI-generated front cover and the promo video, which he has gracefully shared on Facebook. Let's take a look. Now, in all fairness, these images do look rather good. Again, I'm not entirely sure he can get away with all the imagery, but credit where credit is due, they do look quite nice. The only problem is, come on, it's so obvious, all of the text was stolen. Obviously it was stolen. The Day of the Tentacle section is stolen from lucasdelirium.it. The same goes for the Fate of Atlantis section, with a sprinkling of Wikipedia too. It's once again the same for the Dig section, and finally the Labyrinth walkthrough, which is super top secret and confidential, once again, thank you to the stock photo for that, is just a walkthrough stolen from game FAQs. <laughs> He does, however, show the license code for the music used in the promo, so, you know, that's good. At least he's paid for something. Oh, no, wait, it's all free. Here's my license to use the same music in this video. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Actually, it's not. Hi everyone, it's DJ Slope from the future here, and before I continue on with the original video, quite a lot has changed due to me taking so long with the research, scripting, and editing of this video. So, I've got quite a few updates for you, let's get on with it. Firstly, the owner of the website, Lucas Delirium, was rightfully very upset with his website essentially getting ripped off and asked Mr. Mapelli to remove all of his text. And in his defense, when the Kickstarter went live, he did that exact thing. Yes, the Kickstarter is currently live and it's well underway to getting funded. I've tried looking myself and honestly, I can't find where he's taken any of this text from. It doesn't appear to be stolen 
or even AI generated. Although it is quite hard to work that out due to the original text probably being written in Italian and then being translated to English. If you find anything, be sure to let me know either in the comments or over on Discord. The main body of the campaign, however, is showing up that 42% is in fact AI generated. And finally, when the campaign went live, this image was used on the front page before Jan Hofmeister, a well-respected artist in the community, spoke up and showed that Mr. Pelly had done it again. He had stolen the work that he had done for Limited Run on the collector's edition of Loom. Since then, the book cover has been changed and the campaign video has been changed too. Seriously, this guy is constantly just updating his Kickstarter every single time somebody spots where he's stolen something from. Once again, if any of you guys find anything, be sure to let me know down in the comments or over on Discord. Anyway, back to the original video. Look, when this kick scammer came in, I just had to make a video on it because I've got a lot of fans out there that are fans of the point and click genre. And it's likely that if you look at this, you may not see the errors that he's made here. Hopefully this video helps you guys spot out con artists like this. And if you are interested in reading about the history of point and click adventure games, then you've got plenty of places to go and do that. I already mentioned the amazing Lucas Delirium website that was so good it was stolen. And for people out there that fancy something a bit beefier, here's a book that I've had in my collection for a good couple of years from Bitmap Books. An affiliate link can be found down below. Hey there guys, thanks for checking out the video. So yes, uh, this video right now, I was not going to be releasing this one. I've been sitting on a a rather massive kick scammer video. I think it's got the potential to really blow up. Um, I've been sitting on it for a few weeks, but I wanted to put this one out first because this is a live campaign. Um, and yeah, I wanted to make sure as many people saw this as possible before it's too late. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much. But if you want to check out that video that... It's insane that no one's talking about this. <laughs> no one has talked about this over the last what, 15 years or so. Um, yeah, you can go check that out right now. It's uh, You can become a Patreon or a YouTube member. Be one of the names that you see on the bottom here. Um, yeah, go and check that out. Thank you guys so, so much for checking out this video. And this is the part of the video I'd like to give a massive shout out to all of my Patreons and YouTube members with an extra big shout out going to the following. Akatimo84, Andrew Dalton, Arista, Benjamin Guy, Boots and Pup, Bram Perez, Casey Samples, Chev Matic, Clan Bob, Conrad Constantine, De Action Saxon, Dina, Dina81, Derek Kuda, Ian Quell, Jay is Manchild, Jabba Al Aiden, James, Jeff Mianowski, John Rogers, Matt Jackson, Mike Fallon, Mind of the Unsane, Nicholas Burtner, Paul Floats, Roll VP, Retro to Next Gen, aka Lou, Richard Aldrich, Ryan Burford, Sir Nilsson, Shadow Dragon, The Sneaky Ferret, Vita Svanes, VPS Data, Vikeko, What Wasn't Being the Wonder Ducks and ye old hamburglar. Thank you guys so, so much for supporting the show. But until next time, until you see that next video, it's going to be big. Until next time, this is DJ Slope signing out and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.